Welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to fix chromatic aberration, which can come from a combination of factors, such as the way the lens bends the different wavelength colors that make up the white light, and the way the color sensors in the digital camera respond to that bright light. Now, I had an image, which I have in a previous tutorial in Photoshop Elements 10. Unfortunately, I lost it. So I'm actually using this photo from Digital Camera World, um, giving out where credit is due. And you can see the chromatic aberration here. If I double-click on the hand, this is Oh, excuse me, a hundred percent. So it's kind of hard to see right here. So you need to zoom in, press Control plus, and then we can definitely see it a little bit better here. And you can see that there's some purple fringing here going on. So we have some chromatic aberration. It usually happens in also in the high contrast areas. Now there's two ways of fixing this. One, you can go to Filter, Lens Correction. It's going to be a humongous dialog box. I'll try to move this over here so you can see it better. I'm going to turn off the grid, but I just want to show you quickly that they offer these choices under the custom tab, and you have the red cyan fringe, you have the green magenta fringe, and you have the blue yellow fringe, and you move it one way or the other to reduce the chromatic aberration. Um, this is one way to do it. I'm going to show you a different way. Um, I go to my, right here, I use my adjustment layers, which is this icon right here. This will open up a whole bunch of adjustments. What's good about them is they don't harm the original file. Uh, they don't add to the file size as if I had to um, duplicate the background layer twice. And they provide some options for me. Now, what I like about this is called, I believe it's called the on target. So you just click it, move over to the color, click, and you notice it changed the magentas. Great. So now we now know this is a magenta problem. So what we do is reduce the saturation, and great, we're done. Uh, but it doesn't look like we're done, right? Yeah, I agree with you. So I move back over again, and I try to see what other colors is being mixed in there. And guess what is blues? So I come over to my blues and reduce its saturation. But then now I see there's a little bit of extra something there. What's that about? And I see some green over here. So now I have to click on this again and choose the greens. And I reduce my greens, and you can see that it went away. So normally you just mess with one slider, but with this photo, it was three sliders you had to mess with. Now what's great about these little adjustment layers is that you have this little icon here, and this you press it before, after, before, after. So that's great. And then we can double click on the zoom tool, and we can see that we have a nice little happier image um, as compared to the before, <laughs> after, before and after. And you can see that this was a better way of correcting the chromatic aberration than using the lens, because I'm going to show you right here real quickly. Oh, excuse me, i got to go back here. Filter, lens correction, I'm going to show you why. Because if I go to my custom tab, the green and the magenta were on the same one. So if I reduce the magenta, I still had the green problem. So I couldn't have used this slider. So that's why the hue saturation was a better opportunity than using lens correction. Now in the next chapter or next lesson, excuse me, we'll be learning about the histogram in the info panel.